so I am back after my fourth graveyard shift and I know that you can tell from my eye bags there, eye luggages. I'm going to be sharing with you how I doubled my salary in the last year and what are my thoughts about it. So stay put and I'll see you in a little while. Hi guys, I'm back. Welcome back to my channel. I am Joyce. I'm a nurse here in the UK, here to share with you my life journey and my story. If you are new here, thank you so much for clicking and for having an interest in the video. And if you are a returnee, thank you so much. You have been really giving me so much inspiration to keep on making these videos. Here in the UK, we have something called P60. And P60 is a type of form which shows the amount of tax that you've paid from April 6 to April 5 of the following year. This P60 will be only showing the tax you have paid for one job. So P60 is important to be kept because this form will be something that you will use if in case you would want to, in the future, make a loan or for your mortgage. The numbers written in my P60 as my total earnings for the last year was 61,320.09 compared to my basic annual salary of 32,760 as I have shared with you. Here are the happy and sad truths about that money. Being a bedside nurse means that I am actively trading my time for the money that I would want to make, which means I would only earn more if I work more. So yeah, for the last year, OT has been really life. My contracted hours is only 36 hours, but because of staff shortage and people calling in sick because of the COVID, I was able to cover more shifts. I have been doing probably five or six. Yeah, five or six. I can't even imagine how I managed to do that before, but that's how it was. What are the reasons why I took the extra hours? I took the extra hours because I would want to help on the floor knowing that there will be no one taking the shifts. So I volunteered to do the shifts. And also, I am really immensely happy whenever I see the paycheck after each month because it's like almost double of what I would normally get if I don't do bank shifts. Yeah, kaching kaching. During that time, we are not allowed to go out because we are in a lockdown. Seeing other people, apart from being just in my household, is like a mental refreshment. It has really helped me a lot in getting through that year. Health-wise, in the last year, I would always have this severe headache, but I would just really ignore it because I think that probably I was just eating late because normally if you are on the floor you would forget to eat or you will be too busy to have to even have lunch or a snack but then it became so recurrent I was reluctant to go to the GP and report this headaches because a Filipino you know that we pride ourselves as being bubbly and jolly no matter what life throws at us but then I realized that probably pandemic really has a great effect on our mental health and it would have affected me in some way so yeah it took it took me a lot of courage to admit that there's something wrong but anyway now i am better and looking forward to better days ahead like i said i was doing four to six shifts a week and you would think like in that amount of hours that i'm putting on at work do i still even have time for myself well yes the good thing was that i had this mentality at that time that no matter what happens, continuously work out, eat healthy, and read books. And those are my types of self-care. And also, at this time, during the pandemic, I was able to discover Caroline Gervan. If you are following me on Instagram, you would know that I am a fanatic of Caroline Gervan because it has really changed my life so much. It ha Through her, I was able to stick to my fitness routine. See working out as something that I do for myself rather than just because I want to change aesthetically. At this time, me and my colleague Karishma were also able to raise funds for Bone Cancer Research Trust and we have accumulated the total amount of 632 or 34 pounds. The challenge was doing 2,000 per piece for the whole November and then people would sponsor us. For those who have donated, thank you so much. You have really helped us a lot and I am sure that the money you have donated has been put to good use for hopefully finding a cure for bone cancer in the future. I think you can relate to this one because in the last year we can't go out as much or eat out as much or spend our money because there's nowhere to go 
all that money was saved up instead of getting spent. According to Office of National Statistics in 2020, the amount of savings ratio in the UK has really inflated. From 6.3 in 2019, it has gone up to a mind-blowing 16.8 in 2020. For that year, I also managed to check my financial goals, which is building my emergency fund, amounting to three months of my living expense. I was also able to put more money in my life strategy in Vanguard in this year. On a different note, I have also experienced lifestyle inflation and splurged occasionally. Lifestyle inflation is when your spending increases as your paycheck increases. So for me, as I see my paycheck getting bigger, I was like, oh, I've got room for more stuff for myself because I'm working four to six shifts a week. I deserve a reward. I would spend so much on workout clothes that I would normally not spend on before. I also found myself buying this expensive facial care, which is like times five of what I would normally buy because really, I'm just buying um, body shop <laughs> cream. And now I bought this Kiehl's, if I'm pronouncing it right. Although I find it, I find that it's working. However, it's just shocking to me now that I would spend that much money. I finally woke up and said, I cannot be doing this. I need to keep my expenses low and my savings high. I went back to spending as less as I could without really depriving myself. So yeah, Tita goals. <laughs> and here, for the most awaited part, the most exciting, and also the most depleting part of this video, the deductions. So for this 61,320.09, the percentage that went to deductions is 27.44% shocking. <laughs> well, that goes to my NI went to or national insurance went to my payee or the tax that i'm paying and then lastly for my um, nest pension contribution first deduction is the payee or the tax that i am paying so for that year 11,888 or about 20 percent of my income went to the tax well this tax is something that i don't really question much because I can really see what we are taken care of here in the UK. Healthcare is free and I feel safe in the community. And the place is just really well looked after. There are some parts that look grubby, but overall, I am very satisfied. <laughs> For the second one, it is NI pay. And NI is national insurance pay. This is to qualify for state pensions and benefits like bereavement, um, job seekers allowance and in the future state pension so for the ni my total deduction is 4,143.02 lastly nest pension which goes to my retirement in the future and like i said before i am contributing three percent of my salary and my company matches the three percent my total contribution for nest is 2,771.88 to sum it all up, all the deductions amounted to 16,381.02. And that leaves me to a total amount of 44,489.07 spending budget for the whole year. Reflection time. Overall, I am really grateful and I feel really blessed because I get to have a job that covers my expenses and more for the things that I would love to do. I think it is good to be hitting our financial goals and putting more money in our bank accounts and our investment portfolios, but it should not be at the expense of the things that truly matter, such as our health and our time with our family and our loved ones. So, will I do it again? Of course, yes, if I really have to, if my basic rate won't be able to cover any financial responsibilities which will I will have in the future. Mainly, I make sure that my expenses are low but of course if there will be anything i need to cover i would be happy to do it and to help if i am needed i'll give this a try this year that i will just really compute the amount of money i need and then just put on hours depending on the need that i have so that i still have time for the projects i want to make outside of work like me making videos and sharing it to you and also things that would make me a better person in all honesty ever since i came here i'm the type of person who would really grab all the opportunity to do overtime 
<laughs> yes, but now that I am seeing things in a different light, I would really want to make time for things that give me an identity apart from being a nurse. There's nothing wrong with being a nurse. I am proud to be one. But it's just that outside of work, I want to be defined as someone as well. That is something that I would want to pursue. And lastly, regrets. I think that I have regretted the people outside of work. There are so many times that I could have met with my friends when the lockdown eased several times, but I didn't because I chose to work. You would just really realize that in everything we do, there is cost opportunity. You cannot really have everything. Choosing something is a trade-off to something that you could have done as well. Being able to find which one you value most will help you choose which one you would want to do and prioritize. I will try to be a better friend. And there you go. That's a snippet of my life in the last year. Again, I am really thankful for the time that you have shared with me watching this video. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye!